Okay, thank you for the question. Yeah, I, I will actually start with um, my student days in Berlin. I was studying widely. I was studying his history, sociology, um, linguistics, uh, Slavic languages, and uh, and anthropology. And I was focused on uh, Western Africa and Eastern Europe. Um, I was interested in something we might call a holistic understanding of social transformations. And um, uh, my first empirical studies were on gentrification in East Berlin and on um, rural markets in Nigeria, in the middle bed. And um, so these were in a way overtly economic questions, but they were also asking, you know, what are the political backgrounds, what are the um, cultural effects and, uh, and how does this play out in society? Um, so Anat Singh has used the, the term friction. So how, how do things in, entwine, intermingle, come together, produce heat and energy and change? And so this, this is always the question. So um, then I started my PhD in, in Halle at the Max Planck Institute. And there I turned from these more economic to the more overtly political questions, which um, was on uh, the local state and uh, social security in Serbia. So I did field research 18 months in Serbia at a time um, of deindustrialization because of a kind of post-socialist transformation and also financial crisis. And um, living in a village, uh, all my interlocutors were kind of wondering what they should produce. Uh, the, the prices were going down, the, the tariffs uh, were slashed, um, the, the prices uh, oscillated widely and almost everybody told me they wanted to do raspberries but almost nobody did. And, and so there kind of the question emerged, uh, why is raspberry such a, you know, such a plant that you desire to have and that you desire to produce the berries? And at the same time, it's so elusive and not everybody or almost nobody did it. Mm -hmm. And so this is, this is how I came to, uh, after my PhD, uh, then I went to Arilje, which is, uh, even further south. So my original research was 100 kilometers south of Belgrade and Arelia is 150 kilometers south of Belgrade. And it's the so-called capital, world capital of raspberries. And there I started. So this has to do both uh, with serendipity, or, I mean, a bit of luck and also a little bit of strategic questions. So when I, when I uh, finished my PhD, I, I was um, like everybody struggling to find a position. And in my first postdoc that I had at Bielefeld, uh, I was uh, both doing research and kinship and politics. I was uh, applying for all kinds of jobs and I was also doing teaching as much as possible to beef up my, my portfolio. And Klaus Sedlenix from the Riga Stradens University, he put out a call for applications. And uh, so the idea was to find for him a Western Balkan specialist working on the state, uh, applying with Riga Stradens University for this European research development. Uh, funding. So we tried, we did, and we were not successful. But uh, he invited me to teach no, at the, at the Riga Schleins University. And I came and this were really fantastic two weeks in 2017. And we were both highly motivated to uh, give it a second try. And uh, so to be more competitive, uh, we also wanted to have a kind of a, um, uh, something that uh, is in a way similar, but also different to Serbian uh, raspberries uh, in Latvia. And so we asked around and one colleague, uh, Guntra Estara, she's an environmental anthropologist, she, should, she, she suggested the niche economy of, of Sibaxon, which is growing at the moment and also produces in a way desires and aspirations for, for development. So, and I was very happy about that because uh, I come from, from East Germany and in East Germany, we have uh, all across the Baltic Sea, we have all these uh, sea work thorns as well. So uh, I, I proposed to, to study uh, Serbia, Latvia, and also have a, a, a little project uh, combined with, with Eastern Germany. And, and so in a way, the uh, strategic uh, aspect in a way is, okay, so I, I do speak Russian and Serbian and German, so that uh, helps a lot. But as an East German, it, I knew it was difficult or uh, to do anthropology at home. It's, it's always more complicated for a couple of reasons, including that you always think that you know the answer already. And also the people you talk to think you know the answer. So it's much more difficult to come up with something surprising yourself and surprising others. 
So now after, after this roundabout through Western Africa and, and Serbia and Latvia, I also can approach this question, I think, in, in East Germany. And I'm surprised how much I don't know. I mean, uh, the, there is like two stories that I want to complicate in a way. So the one is the hegemonic story that uh, socialism was kind of unproductive and, uh, and destructive of, of the environment, of the psyche of humans. Uh, it, was, uh, it was kind of totalitarian and so on. Um, it has these aspects, but it was much more. So I want to st uh, write against that. And, and the other one is in a way that, you know, during socialism, everything was kind of great and, you know, things were better in the nostalgic past. So I, I try to situate myself in the middle. And, and so with the, with the raspberries, uh, this is such a story. So the raspberries, actually, the infrastructures uh, were, were laid in the 70s by, by socialist uh, engineers and agronomists. Um, they survived capitalism and then they grew and then they were multiplied. And so uh, what was fascinating for me was I learned that Serbia has been producing uh, since the 80s uh, every seventh raspberry in the world comes from Serbia. And and uh, and they survived. And the, the second thing that was interesting for me was uh, science and technology aspect. So the Serbs uh, were very much looking to the West. So when they when so they talked to the to the West German uh, buyers, uh, they sent their agronomists to Scotland and and England and Switzerland and France. And in the end, they found this American variety, which was already old and tried, Villamet. And, and they, they used that one and to, to grow. Uh, they could have chosen the Hungarian one, Fertuit, which was novel, which tasted better, which was looking good, uh, also better. I mean, both are good uh, raspberries, but the Fertuit is even better, but they just didn't really consider that for some reasons. And, and even though the Hungarians were in a way do the better uh, raspberry, they get more money for it on the market. And even uh, in Serbia, you get more money for the Hungarian raspberry. They outcompeted the Hungarians. So this was uh, surprising and, and I'm still uh, working on, on explaining it. You know? mm -hmm. And then when you come to Latvia, uh, the, the picture changes a little bit. So in, in Latvia, the export of, of Sibaxon really starts in 2018 when the private capitalist entrepreneurs they come together and form a cooperative. So in a way, the cooperative that was so long dead after socialism as an idea now becomes a prerequisite to export in a capitalist market. And, and the second thing that was surprising that everybody, that the science and technology here, it looks uh, to the East. Uh, so the, the first, the first uh, um, breeders in, in Latvia, Andris Bruvilis and uh, Carlis Blooms, they got their first uh, cultivars or the first plants they got from the Moscow Botanical Garden in the 1980s. And the research center in the world since the 1930s is Barnaul in Siberia. And uh, the biggest production is in China, uh, actually around the desert Gobi, where they try to uh, stop desertification, but now they have so much rust, uh, sea bugs on, so they try to do something with it extra, uh, which you can use in cosmetics and you can use it in, uh, in drinks and so on. Uh, it's a very high high quality product as well. So, but the East Germans, although there's all this Eastern European history, they didn't get any support from the Soviets. And so they were uh, selecting their own varieties from, from the Baltic Sea and then, and then they, uh, they started their own product. And the East Germans, they did it because they wanted to substitute uh, citrus fruits uh, like oranges and, and, uh, and um, citrus like lemon and they said okay well you know we have already enough sugar but we don't have lemon so so let's do it so so this is the kind of things that i find fascinating uh, and that complicate in a in, in a way uh, certain stories and there's still not enough i think research on science and technology from from the global east in a way and how they're how they're uh, entwined uh, with with other dimensions uh, I, th I think um, I would situate it today in, in environmental anthropology, I think. So the question is, how can we live on a planet that has been damaged by capitalist and socialist modernity uh, in, uh, and imperialism since the last uh, couple of hundred years? Um, I mean, so probably more blame is to be put on capitalism and imperialism than on socialism, although it has its own kind of capitalist and imperialist dimensions. So. How do we do? How do we live? With, how do we live in the ruins of capitalism? As Anna Singh is asking, and 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 I'm looking, uh, and I think Anna Singh, she's looking at these mushrooms that pop up in the in the forests, you know, spontaneously in a way, and 
Um, but I'm, I'm looking at more human design, I mean, in a way. So these people are uh, really want to, uh, they desire to, to plant these raspberries and 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 uh, sea bucks on. So so um, and these are niches. So they are um, not completely uh, profit driven only. So there is um, the element of solidarity and collaboration between these different farmers is higher. It's uh, so it's kind of the friction is there, but uh, it it points to I think to some solutions uh, and perhaps also uh, to the idea that we might have to scale down some elements of production. We have to even if this is monocultures, but these are small monocultures and uh, perhaps these small monocultures and more diversified ones that uh, both produce more uh, high, not only have more high value goods, but also employ more people and, and even have positive effects for the environment. As I said, uh, anti-desertification measure and so on. So that might be a way forward. So we, could, we, we can learn from these uh, East European uh, uh, experiments uh, to, to think about, I mean, East, to yeah, for our environmental questions of, of today and cap and anti cap in a way, uh, how to survive is a capitalist production. How to survive capitalism? <laughs>